Yeah, welcome back. Now, 34 Africans from the diaspora have been granted Ghanaian citizenship Wednesday in Accra at a ceremony attended by President John Mahama with a call on them to abide by the laws of Ghana and defend the country at all times. Many diasporans have yearned to return to the motherland to reconnect with the land of the ancestors and assist in the development of the continent. Well, today at the Dubois Center, it was an emotional period for 34 of them, some of whom hailed from the US and UK. President Mahama described the day as signifying turning the door of no return to the door of return. He urged the new Ghanaian citizens to apply for Ghanaian passports as they are now entitled to them. President Mahama also stated he would love to have the visa on arrival policy extended to members of the diaspora. In July this year, we passed another historic legislation that gives all Africans, all persons carrying passports of African countries, the right to apply for visas on arrival. And that has facilitated travel of Africans into Ghana. I believe that this privilege can be extended to the diaspora to allow all persons to allow all persons, you know, of the diaspora, Africans, to be able to visit not only Ghana, but all other African countries without the necessity of having to travel to embassies abroad to apply for visas. I do believe that this is a win-win. Our brothers and sisters who live in the diaspora have acquired skills that are useful to the motherland. And so by allowing you to come and go freely and even to reside, you bring that back those skills to the motherland and help us to develop our continent. And so let me congratulate those of you who are receiving citizenship today. I believe you're not going to be the last. This should be the first. Protect, protect, and defend the Constitution of the Republic of well, on his part, Interior Minister Prosper Bani commended the new citizens for choosing to return to the motherland and make Ghana their preferred destination. He, however, warned their citizenship could be revoked on certain grounds. A Ghanaian citizen, citizens could be revoked as follows. And I quote, the High Court may, on an application by the Attorney General for the purpose to deprive a person who is a citizen of Ghana, otherwise by birth or adoption, of which citizenship on the grounds. One, that the activities of a registered Ghanaian are found to be inimical to the security of the state. Two, that the activities of a registered Ghanaian are prejudicial to the public morality or the public interest. Three, that the citizenship was acquired by fraud or misrepresentation. Five, any other improper or irregular practice. We suggest that this ceremony also reminds all of us that we have to be of good behavior and as good Ghanaians. So what does being a certified Ghanaian mean to these diasporans who have chosen to return to the motherland? That's the question Joy News' Maxwell Agbaba posed to some of them. It means that um, we're welcome back to Africa after being away for so long. It's, it's a great feeling, man. Um, after so many hundreds of years, we've been acknowledged. Because all this time we weren't acknowledged that we came from here. And that, that's what it means to us. Now we come back because we've got skills, we've got small money, and we can help to develop the country. Yeah, we can, we can help to have an input here. Whereas over the other side, you know, we're not, that, we're not welcome there. But over here, yeah, over here we can have an input. And we can help our people. So you believe we can have an input here? Yes, yes, we, we have got an input, you know. Okay. Yeah, we have been... A, the last 15 years. Okay, so let me come to you also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, what, what does it mean to you 
on well, this conferment of citizenship? What does it mean for you? It means that um, we're representing our ancestors who were taken from here, and we are the ancestors who have returned. And that's all I have to say. God bless Ghana. We all influence each other. We all learn from each other. You understand? We learn from the people that are here, and they also teach us something because we have to know our history and our traditions and our culture, and we learn that from the Ghanaians. So it is a, for me, it is a win-win situation. I've been living here in Ghana for almost four years now, and uh, I retired from the U.S., but I still I want to be a, a citizen of the United States and, and Ghana. Uh, I'm officially uh, accepted back home in my homeland of Africa. And uh, I know as of 2012, I had my DNA done and came back that my ancestral homeland was Ghanaian. So everything has come full circle and I'm at my rightful place in the world again. So it means a great deal to me to be here and be a part of this ceremony to restore my African citizenship. The African Union has tried to build a house, but they rejected the cornerstone. And the cornerstone are the children of the diaspora. This house cannot be built without the diaspora being. We are the center cornerstone of Africa. Please. Not Quality Health Africa, a nonprofit organization whose aim is building sustainable health care systems in Africa, has organized the Quality Health Africa Summit 2016 in Accra. The summit was held to strategically tackle the critical challenges faced by health care providers and health service consumers in Ghana and Africa. A senior lecturer and researcher at the University of Ghana, Professor Major Retired George Asari, who spoke at the event, said health literacy among health personnel and their clients challenges the mind and allows understanding of stakeholders in the sector. He added the citizens who are educated and informed on health issues to a large extent determine the health of the nation. Ms. Asari disclosed that about 70 to 80 percent of Ghanaians use traditional medicines when ill while only about 20 percent employ the biomedical health services. When you talk of health education, the government should spearhead education. Education, of course, takes place in schools, but not necessarily health education. The whole educational system also re needs re-examination. There's literacy and numeracy. It's good, but it's not the end to it. Because you can have uneducated schooled people. And this is what we see in the system. So you need people not only to be able to read and write, but to understand and to critically think of what they are reading, what they are writing, and what they understand. And can the students take this form of knowledge further than what they have received? Then we are educating them. Education actually deals with critical thinking and being able to understand, and not a question of memorizing information and facts that are, you know, is given across. And therefore, because it is health, government must be the spearhead you know, uh, organ for this, followed by even the private sector, so that we can give people the right education on health issues. It is for this reason that the Medical Journalist, Journalist Association of Ghana has also been formed. Now, the Hamatan is already here and thereby making life uncomfortable for most people. It comes with the dry and dusty wind that is not friendly at all. This uh, shift has changed the lives of people in the Upper West region, right from the way they dress to the type of pomade that they use. For dealers in secondhand pullovers and cosmetic products, they say that they are making the best of the season. Upper West correspondent Rafi Salam has more. The Hamatan is here with us again, and its severity is at a zenith. It has changed the lifestyle of the people right from the clothes they wear to the pomade smeared on their body. Abdullah Banja is a resident of Wazongo and has a ritual of visiting his kid brother every day at Banungoma, a suburb of Wa, 
He is fond of wearing singlet there, but because of the hamatan, he is now marooned to this alpine hoodie pullover. And when you just wake up in the morning, even to perform a bruising to pray is a problem. Your, the water will be cold even inside your room. You have to use cloth to cover yourself before you can sleep. So now you have dressed this way. Yeah. Is it a cure for it? Yeah, it does a cure. Because I just dress like this and cover my ears for me to just protect myself. Stay for me. Wallahi. <laughs> Everybody will see, see you and say, my friend, why? Is it one man that you didn't bow? It is not only the change of clothes that is synonymous here. Jesse Sasari works at Bayport Financial Service and he told me how the cold has affected his way of bathing. Uh, I can't bath for. When I just bath, and, uh, when I'm going to bath, uh, I just take all the small, all, small water. So, I mean, take my arm piece and then uh, my private pack. Then after that, I just put something on my body because of when I take more water, it will affect me. Haji Hawawu is a rice seller at the market. She's always one of the first people to the Wafadama market. By 4 a.m., she's already here to start the cooking of the rice, but now has to shift to an hour and a half later due to the cold. If you don't have the courage, you cannot come out from your house because of the cold. You know times are hard, and if we fail to come out, we cannot take care of our families. Even when she finished preparing the rice, her customers are also stuck at their homes. However, one of them defied the odds, came out to have his breakfast. But you know, as a man, you can't wake up and relax for a house unless you go out and find something and chop and go to your work. That's why you see me wear this black coat this morning. And I come to Hajjah place and find a, a, a hot rice and chop. That's why you see me here this morning. Despite the complaint from residents about the severity of the Hamatan, dealers in second-hand pullovers and cosmetic products said they are making the best out of the weather. Here at A+, Plus, nails, cosmetics and perfumes, they told me that business has been better. We used to have this land for months and nobody will come to ask of them. But now people are patronizing them because it prevents one's legs from cracking. Same could also be said of the sale of secondhand pullovers as there's a mad rush for them. Reporting for your news, Rafik Salam. Wow. <laughs>a store on the Hamatan, several domestic airline travelers were stranded at the Kutka International Airport following the cancellation of their flights due to the bad weather. Jennifer Ikuyama was at the airport earlier and has come through with this report. So I'm here at the uh, Kotoka International Airport, and that's the situation right now. Hamatan has set in very heavily, and it's already started affecting planes. But as it stands right now, already uh, one passenger was not able to fly out of the country or to other parts of the country because her flight was delayed due to poor visibility. I'll speak to a couple of other passengers and see whether it's the same situation across board. But when is your, your mom supposed to travel? This morning. At it by 10 o'clock, she have to leave back because of the weather. She was not able. So did they say when she will go? No, but she will come out to us. So we don't know when she will be leaving or maybe tomorrow or the next day. I don't know. I can't tell. We flew in uh, two days ago, and then uh, today we're supposed to fly out to uh, Kamasi. So you flew in from where? From the U.S., uh, Washington, D.C. And, and you're flying to Kamasi? Kamasi. So what time were you supposed to have left? We, uh, the flight, 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock yeah. flight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, the information we were given was visibility. So visibility was poor, and uh, right now we're here. We're actually thinking about taking the bus. I'm supposed to travel to Mali, but due to the weather condition, the airport authority just informed us that our flight had been canceled. So I'm here waiting for the hotel shuttle to pick me back to the hotel. Um, has, has the airport told you maybe when and the next flight will be available? Okay, they told us that uh, 
we should go and come tomorrow for tomorrow's flight. But they, they couldn't give us the exact weather. It will all depend on the weather. So if tomorrow too we come and the weather is still not good, maybe we might not go. But if, if it is good, then we will be traveling. So the hammer town has set in and the weather is dry, but Twitter is not dry as a real storm has been generated by the British High Commissioner to Ghana, John Benjamin, in an obvious reference to President Mahama. John Benjamin asks whether the hammer town was also inaugurated. It reads, oh, that nasty air outside all of a sudden. Did someone inaugurate the hammer town already? Well, we have been monitoring the reactions to the tweet. Here is a news desk report. John Benjamin is back with his tweets that are getting many Ghanaians talking. He asked if someone had just inaugurated, yes, inaugurated the Hamatan, which he describes as nasty air. But when it comes to inauguration of projects, the obvious reference is to President Mahama, who unveiled many projects prior to the recent elections. At least, that's what some people think. And the reaction on Twitter is enormous. Senanuk Podo writes, John Benjamin must be called to order because he may be suffering from mouth diarrhea. Kobe writes, we make every issue partisan here in Ghana. John Benjamin was wrong for disrespecting our president. But not everyone agrees. The diplomat got it all wrong. One tweet reads, John Benjamin once made a funny tweet on Obinim and it seemed cool. He asked if Mahama inaugurated Hamatan, and you're all angry. And Asari Chase writes, Twitter and their fake mad tactics. What's the drama with what John Benjamin said? I see nothing wrong with it. But John Benjamin has a history of stair causing tweeting. While an ambassador to Chile in 2012, he mistakenly posted a joke to Twitter about the Argentine football team that angered Argentines. He wrote, Argentines, gays, they took the Falklands off you because you are cowards. Already, there's a hashtag, John Benjamin must go, that's yet to trend. But even if it does, who would take action? Well, Mr. Benjamin has since deleted the tweet, ostensibly to avoid annoying some Ghanaians further. And although he may have been diplomatic about the situation and not mention President Mahama in his tweet, not everyone is holding back. Ghanaian actress and radio host Efia Schwarzenegger, who is known for her brash tongue-in-cheek statements, says the president must inaugurate the Hamatan. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> On to other stories, and they may not be the most sophisticated and luxurious means of transport. Neither are they your most spacious carriage trucks, but the predominantly yellow shoe-sized tricycle, popularly known as Mahama Kambu in the Upper West region, is serving multiple purposes while saving residents a lot of money and creating employment for scores of young people in the regional capital, Wa. Join News' Komla Dum visited the area and now reports. The once popular motorbike is now playing second fiddle to the Mahama Kambu. For 35-year-old Ibrahim, quitting his full-time job in Kumasi to settle here in the Upper West region meant he needed a source of sustainable income and the Mahama Kambu business provided a timely escape. While he continues to work as a teacher in the Upper West Regional Capital, he makes time for the transport business as well. I try to look out for some opportunities. But I realize that uh, I cannot just start anything without knowing what the benefits are. So I stayed here later, I came out, I saw that. Uh, 
over here, our means of transport is uh, this motorbike and then transport. So I decided to get one. I love doing subscription with the remote primary school, which is in one place. And since teaching, you can still get some time after classes, I pick up this. So the taxis, yeah, most of them are negative. They are not but his energy and enthusiasm is what sets him apart. He tells me one can make between 1,800 and 2,000 Ghana cities monthly if they are keen. The market, you know what, you have a good and bad days. So depending on the day, this season in particular, because people have come down, they are moving all over the place. Uh, if you work very hard, at least you can get uh, 130, 120 there about. And the fuel consumption too is quite minimal. So when you buy the fuel and you are not speeding, you are just within the confines of the town. You are able to save maybe buy the fuel 25 to 30 cities. But in cases where you have to go around and move faster, you may buy four to one. Uh, four to one Ghana cities per day. So it depends on the day. And uh, you can even make more than 150 if you have a good day. So on the average, at the end of the month, how, how much are we looking at? Um, putting everything aside, if you are able to deny your fuel and other things, I for one, or many of us, pay 66. So if roughly you use 30 days, you'll be looking around 1,800. So if I is a good source of employment. According to folks in the community, social vices have drastically reduced since more youth are engaged in meaningful business. For commuters, they are comfortable with the Kambu as they say it is affordable as well. Actually, it's very comfortable. You know, as compared to um, the Trotro, it's very optimal that commuters should use it. One disadvantage of it is for the fact that, you know, it is open. During the rainy season, uh, you find it difficult. But for now, it is optimal for commuters. It's very comfortable. And then when it comes to uh, the payment, too, it's very, very cheap. Yes, within town or within the central business districts, wherever you are going, it is one city. Okay. But if you are exceeding the central business districts, they are charging you based on the distance. But within the central business districts, you're going to pay only one city. The other side of the business boom is that dealers in the automobile are also cashing in. Abu is an automobile dealer at TA Tango Company Limited. He tells me one can get a brand new Kambu with between 10,000 and 15,000, explaining what he sells is different from the ones for Maslock. Not having much. So when it came to me, a lot of people started buying them, and then now, as you can see, so many people are into it. You can see, as you can see, now we have about, about 200 or 300 in town. Yeah, so it came at the right time, and it has made the, I mean, the transportation in town is very affordable. If you want to go anywhere, if there's no taxi, if there's no truck driver, this one will take you anywhere you want to go. And uh, I mean, the full consumption is very low. Yeah, as to compare the taxi and uh, the truck driver. So if maybe if you ask me, I'll take this one, the economical, if you enter it, I mean, the, the fare that you pay, this is very cheap. He adds the motorbikes, which used to be the go-to means of transport to the interiors of a region before 2008, are selling fast too. Right now, we have some from Maslock, and then we have some that we are selling. So ours and the Maslock are, are not the same. Maslock, they have TBS, and we are having a judge. Okay. Yeah. So the, the ones you sell, if I have like 10,000, can I get Yeah, 10,000 can I get And then the mass lock one, at, 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 it seems right at the moment, they don't have so at the moment. But those ones, if you have, yeah, people have like 3,000, they give you the, the new time period. So how about the motorbikes? Are they now competing with the Mahama Kambus? And the ordinary motorbikes. Yeah, the ordinary motorbikes. Oh, we cannot, it cannot compete with the uh, Mahama Kambus because Mahama Kambus is just for town. Okay. And motors are in the villages. Mahama Kambus is it, only town rider. It cannot be used for. It can go to the village, but if you start to use for village, it will not last. Because they didn't build it for such a condition.
So do you find people buying a lot of the motorbikes as compared to the Mahama Kambus or the other way around? People are buying the Mahama Kambu, all right, but you cannot compare it to motorbikes. Motorbikes started coming around 2018. This one came just like 2006. So they are not the same. Oh. Like 2006, sorry. So they are not the same. He, however, believes the licensing regime of these Kambus need to be re looked at so that only qualified persons are permitted to ride them to prevent accidents. Did they come by the name Mahama Kambu? Kambu. Mahama Kambu. Why did they call him Mahama Kambu? Uh, because it's, it's like that they are the call him. That's the name. So if Mahama that bring her, uh, when Mahama bring her, uh, I enter this as well, they are put out from Mahama Kambu. The, the name I understand is uh, Mahama Kambu. But people say Mahama can do because the Indians find it difficult pronouncing the can do, they give the name Mahama can do, which, is, which has come to stay. When next you visit the Upper West Regional Capital, get a ride around town in the Mahama Kambu. For Joy News, Komla Adum Wa. You're still watching Join News Prime. I'm Marabu Kumsi. We're taking a short break. Don't go away. We'll be back with more stories.